This historically important Jaguar is only one of four factory backed XJ12Cs broad speed race cars that were ever produced. In March 1976, Leyland Cars announced that the Jaguar Mark would return to the world of international racing with its plans to contend in the European Championships of Touring Cars with two massive V12 5.3 coupes, which was the XJ12C. Now these cars were going to be driven by Derek Bell and David Hobbs and the other car was going to be driven by Andy Rouse and Steve Thompson. The cars were built under contract by Broadspeed Engineering Limited. Now they were a tuning and engineering company founded by Rolf Broad. Rolf Broad had previously achieved some big success in campaigning Mark I BMC Minis and also Ford Capris. But despite their best efforts of the drivers and the engineers alike, the cars were plagued by misfortune and shortcomings in reliability. And the 1976 race season ended in a big disappointment. The following year, in 1977, two lightweight coupes were built to compete with the lighter BMW 3 litre CSL cars. And again, Derek Bell and Andy Rose would be racing these cars. But they could not overcome the reliability problems that stemmed from underinvestment. And in 1977, it was basically a repeat of the 1976 year's disappointments. With further funding cuts on the horizon, British Leyland discontinued their support. After just two seasons of racing, so it ended in a brief but colourful era for this legendary broad speed XJ12C. So what makes an XJ12C so appealing? It's got to be the noise. The legendary V12 making a massive shriek out of the incredible exhausts must have been unbelievable to hear. But then an XJS would have made a similar noise, or indeed the latter TWR XJS did. But nobody quite gets excited about those cars. It's only this Jaguar XJ12C. Now the story goes that Rolf Broad, Broad Speed's founder, wanted to make an XJS touring car. It was a new car then, after all, and probably more suited to racing but Jaguar wanted to sell more XJ12s, so this was the result. Even today, it looks absolutely huge and probably imposing. How on earth it must have looked on the grid in 1977? That was its competition life. It was cut short, shown so much potential as a big part of the broad speed XJ12 cult. And in fact, it was built the fact that it was built seems astonishingly such a beautiful monster of a car. Love the design and love the shape of it.